Yo, what's up everybody? It's Drew Barry and I'm kicking off the new year with a custom card review. I'm stoked about it. I apologize. First of all, I want to let you guys know I am sorry that I missed last week's custom card review. It fell on Christmas, which made it really difficult to manage my time and get a properly edited video out to you guys. But today, to make up for it, I'm doing a top 10 of the most recent challenge with a few honorable mentions. You guys absolutely crushed it in the holiday season with the keyword challenge of give. I really like the submissions and I can't wait to show you them, but we have the next week's challenge. And to kick off the new year, I thought no better way to start these challenges off in 2023 with start as our keyword. A few examples of how you can use this is like start of the game. Something happens. So Thanos deck, he shuffles all the infinity stones into your deck, right? Another application is start of the next turn or something like that. Start of turn, anything like that. Be creative with it. If you can find some crazy solutions, then I want to hear them. I want to check them out and maybe they'll make the next video. So if you want to submit a card, jump into the Bayverse Discord, totally free and easy to do. And then you can create a card here uh, at the snaptracker.me custom. Super easy to do. You just need a piece of art and then you're a good idea. And then bam, you got yourself a card and then you just post it in the weekly channel challenge channel please just submit one at a time if you do happen to change your submission just go back and delete your old one it makes it a lot easier to filter through all of the submissions i appreciate everybody that submits a card there are no wrong answers i super appreciate all of your creativity and i look forward to seeing what you come up with start all right we got a bunch of custom cards to review today so i'm gonna go through them fairly quickly uh, but let's get into it all right so kicking off the honorable mentions we got quack masters Ulik, I think that would be pronounced, or Ulik. Uh, on reveal, give your opponent control of all cards with less than one power. This is a five cost, four power card. I think it's pretty fascinating. It's kind of like the Viper effect, right? You give your opponent a bunch of rocks, let's say, because they have less than one power. Maybe you use Hazmat to get rid of the power of your current cards and then give them to your opponent. Then they can't play anything on turn six. I think that's the, uh, the goal with this card. And I think that's a pretty fascinating idea. I think Viper is a really cool card in Marvel Snap that doesn't see enough play because maybe there's not enough support for it. Uh, so maybe a little bit of a later game Viper with Ulik, and then you have to set up your board with low power stuff, which might make it tricky for your opponent. And then you could use an alternative if you give your stuff a bunch of negative power. Your alternative to Ulik could be Luke Cage. So you kind of just tuck both of those into the deck, hope that you draw one, and that's your game plan. So this is really creative card. Then we have Clutch's Krampus. So I did make an exception this last week that the characters could be non-Marvel related. So I do have a few and they're Christmas oriented. There was bonus points for Christmas cards. Uh, so I appreciate this kind of thing with Krampus. Uh, three cost, two power, ongoing at the end of each turn. If you're losing this location, give negative one power to one card in your opponent. Kind of similar to like Iceman, how he gives one cost to opponents, uh, a card in your opponent's hand. Well, Krampus here is going to give negative one power but only if you're losing the location which is kind of tricky to do actually um he does have two power himself um, maybe your opponent hasn't even played anything there yet maybe they can move it away or some location messes it up you never really know these crazy things happen i appreciate the condition that is on this card because usually it's like if you're winning let's say asgard is a location just by example if you're winning that location you receive xyz whatever reward right whereas this one is all about losing and i think that's a really interesting switch which up. Uh, so I really liked this idea. Thank you, Clutch. And then we got Nirai, uh, St. Nicholas, two cost, one power. After each turn, give the cards with a plural or just singular uh, with the least power plus two power. So it's kind of like Cerebro in a sense, right? Your highest power cards uh, get plus two power. Well, in this instance, it's your least powerful stuff. And it's an instance, right? It's not like an ongoing effect like Cerebro. It's every time at the end of a turn, whoever has the least power gets plus two power. I think that's really cool. You play Brood and it just happens to be your lowest power card. All of a sudden, all three of those are getting plus two and that's plus six power. Boom, your little 2-1 St. Nicholas is dishing out gifts like nobody's business. Now this could obviously backfire because all of a sudden your opponent played Hood and then he's negative two power and then he gets plus two power or something like that, right? So you got to watch out what your opponent's doing because it might get the buffs uh, from your St. Nicholas. So we, all of a sudden he's like double agent uh, St. Nicholas here or something. But yeah, really cool creative idea to use the give mechanic. Uh, very fitting for good old jolly St. Nicholas. Uh, but then let's get to the other honorable mention. All right, so check this out. These two get 
uh, full screen application because they are so good. First off that we have here, it's from Kai. Kai absolutely crushes it every single week. I want to showcase his cards all the time. I'm sharing them on Twitter. They are so good animated and all this good stuff. This is Red She-Hulk. It's a four cost nine power. On reveal, give your opponent's cards here plus two power. So it's kind of similar to Red Skull, right? But it has like the stat line of like a Hulk would. Uh, so it's kind of a combination of those two. I thought that was kind of clever. It's also an on reveal, not ongoing. So maybe your opponent doesn't have any cards there. So I think that's a pretty neat effect. But look at the Santa variant, the Christmas variant with the snow and the gifts. My goodness, this guy is so talented. I absolutely love seeing these custom cards like this um, and moving around in the animated fashion. It just looks like it's straight out of the game. Love it. Also, Infinity Border, so good. But even better is the Candy Cane Border Team Second Dinner Take notes we need this next christmas and another honorable mention goes to infernite's major victory infernite has been absolutely crushing it with these cards and he did this crazy thing where like the border and and the glow is is, is animated oh my it looks so good and the text shines it glitters oh my gosh i was just stunned by this one so this is major victory it's a six cost three power on reveal if your opponent played a card here this turn so similar to guardians of the galaxy give your other cards at this location times two power so i don't know how i feel about this overall at a power standpoint because it kind of feels like iron man doubling the location's power uh but this is a six cost which is a bit more difficult and it has a condition of having to play it at a card where your opponent played so you're guessing on turn six wherever your opponent's going to play their card which isn't too hard usually at the end game and this can be a big power output um but might i don't know might overlap with iron man just a bit but regardless incredible art very cool design love the background love the character everything looks so good and i do believe this is tied to guardians of the galaxy lore which i believe infernite said is the reasoning behind this ability so thematically a plus all right and then we have my card that i designed today and it oh oh wait no that's that's not a card i designed that's a card andy c designed using my face in an ai art generator oh my goodness Honestly, I'm just sharing this to shout out Andy C. He's been posting a bunch of artwork in our artwork channel in the Drew Barry, Barry verse Discord, and I super appreciate it. It's so fascinating to see all this art. He's also shouting out the artist, which I really appreciate. Uh, just doing a killer job, and it made me laugh so much when I saw this AI art. It's just, it's just too funny. Uh, and the card itself is pretty funny, you know. I, on reveal, give your opponent's card uh, a random card from your hand, and then your opponent gives you a random card, kind of like a swap. You swap cards with your opponent. A little bit of information back and forth, uh, but just really funny. The the Christmas thing, man. Oh my gosh, it. <laughs> It was just, it's, it's too funny. It's too good. Anyways, I just want to share that. Thank you so much, Andy C. You've been crushing it and I really appreciate it. Number 10, MRX's Baymax. Yes, let's go MRX. I'm putting you in the custom card vid. Now, not just cause, okay? I genuinely like this submission. And on top of this, MRX does their own pixel art. And look at the border, it's all pixely. I love it, it's great. Um, so Baymax here is give both players plus one cube at the end of the game, maximum eight. So this is actually the thing that stood out to me was the maximum eight because a lot of people were submitting like Santa Claus or something like that that was giving players cubes. And I think that's fine, but let's not completely shaft ladder, right? Let's keep it reasonable. If people just get a bunch of cubes, it's just going to not even be competitive. It won't even be ranked ladder. But what if we had this card where it's a maximum of eight, so it was still the natural cube gain or loss, right? But you can kind of mitigate your losses a little bit. I could see this as being like a December uh, event where this card is given to every player and you can choose to play it if you want, right? You could give plus one cubes to each player and then it's kind of a bit of a tempo loss, right? Because you're playing a card that doesn't really get you far, uh, but gives you maybe extra cubes at the end. You never know, like, or mitigates your loss because instead of losing four cubes, now you only lost three because you got one from Baymac. Uh, some synergies are like Killmonger actually. So you could play this, Killmonger it, right? So that you can discount your death. 
So in a destroy package, maybe it works. Falcon it, get it back, play it again, boom. If you're only losing two cubes at the end, all of a sudden it's a free game. Uh, and then Kazar to buff it up because it's one cost. But I don't know if it's like that synergistic. I just think it's an interesting card if you're going to give cubes. If we're going to use the give keyword and it's got cubes involved, I think Baymax is a great option. Very creative for that context. Anyways, thank you, MRX. I super appreciate your always support of the channel. Thank you very much. Number nine, picks. Sync. So this is a really cool card. Uh, and then I have the little versus thing. I do this sometimes. I like to just do whatever I put up there, whatever I think is interesting with the card. But I'm doing this one because when sometimes cards are similar, I like to point out the differences that make the custom card unique, right? So uh, with Sync here is a four cost, four power. On reveal, give the next card you play this card's power. Shuri up here is going to double the power of the next card you play on reveal. So kind of similar, giving power to the next card that you play, essentially, right? But these are still inherently different, right? Sure, he's just gonna double whatever that thing's got going on. So you're trying to actually buff that card to get it to double. Whereas you're trying to buff Sync. You wanna buff Sync so that it gives the power to the next card that you play. You don't have to worry about buffing that other card in your hand. Instead, now you can focus on buffing Sync in your hand or your deck or whatever with Okoye, forge those kinds of things and then you do your big play afterwards it might take a little bit of setting up even more so than shuri um, but the four power is still pretty healthy as well sometimes even like black panther when you double black panther it just gets plus four power from shuri and then it doubles itself obviously but is sync would work the exact same way and if anything has more power on it on its stick right besides its ability so it almost be a better instance of shuri in that scenario uh, but i was thinking another combination is you could com combine it with captain marvel you know give her another plus four uh, or wong allow it to double again that'd be four eight to somebody some other card if you haven't even buffed sync if you get forge on sync then it's six power you're giving six power to the next power card that's like a 12 power for four essentially value so i thought that was really cool it was a uh, great artwork as well i love the rainbow effects of the card frame breaking and the text just oh so crisp right on that card beautiful um very similar to shuri but also there's differences and that is okay you don't have to have something that's completely unique and super out of the box it can be kind of similar something that we could actually see in marvel snap or something that shuri could have been so i like it and i appreciate it and that's why i got number nine thank you picks number eight ankles Herbie. Okay, first of all, how cute is this? This little robot Herbie. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Uh, but a really creative idea here. Okay, so a one cost two power. On reveal, give your cards on the field a permanent one energy reduction. Whoa, how about that? Am I right? And that's pretty powerful, I think. You know, you can give that to any cards. It's not even restricted to really like one cost, two cost, three cost, anything like that. Yeah, just give all the cards that you have played. So you've already committed their original cost and you reduce them. So then if you can somehow get them back to hand with say beast, Whoa, that's a nasty combo because he's going to also reduce their cost when they pull back to hand. So that's two discounts. Or you just draw them back with Falcon if it's a bunch of one cost, and then they're all free in your hand. You can dump them on turn six, maybe, with like Bishop Angela synergies. You do the bounce bros like crazy with this card. Um, or then Wong, you give them two uh, energy reduction, and then you beast them, and then three energy reduction. I don't even know what kind of crazy combos you could come out with that. Uh, but really, it just sets up for those big turn five and six plays, which really snap revolves around nowadays. So I think Herbie would find a lot of decks to work in even though there's only a couple of methods right now in the game of pulling cards back to your hand, which is like really the only way that you can find value from Herbie because if you don't get those cards back to your hand, the cost reduction is really doing nothing. The only other instance is maybe because it's a permanent cost reduction, I'm gonna lean into that a little bit here, is that it would allow cards to dodge other counters. For instance, Killmonger, if something was one and now it's actually zero because it's that permanent energy reduction, well, Killmonger might not destroy it. So it's a tech to defend against that. So I thought that was pretty interesting thing too huh maybe we start running a bunch of four cost stuff and then you play silver surfer uh herbie and silver surfer on turn six and then they become threes and then silver surfer buffs them i i, I don't know i'm just thinking of different ideas here but that's pretty cool it's a very thought-provoking card very cute art great text 
I love it, Ankle. You crushed it. Thank you very much. Number seven, Sky Co Ho Ho's Ancient One. All right, this one's pretty neat. He's got a few variants up here too, which I thought were awesome. The Incified and Christmas variant. Appreciate it. Adding the Christmas touch. Uh, so the Ancient One is a three cost, three power. At the end of each turn, give plus one power to the last card played by each player for each unspent energy. So as you can imagine, you play a card and then let's say it was cost like two and it was on turn four. So you had two unspent energy. Well, that card that you played is gonna get that two energy converted into power. It's kind of like sunspot on every card uh, as long as it's the last one that you play. So almost thinking further is, it, is you could play ancient one, let's say, and then not play anything on four, five, and then that would get essentially nine power and then she becomes a three 12 pretty nuts but then you have to pass two turns so maybe that's not that great but there, i'm sure there's a lot of other applications that this is insane on right but here's the thing it's for each player so that's how it's balanced right uh, it's not just straight up power for you all of a sudden you're buffing your opponent's cards maybe you're convincing them to play off curve all of a sudden they kind of don't want to fill their curve they don't want to play those extra cards because they're not going to get the power benefit that they could from the ancient one being on the field i don't know how that would work if there was two ancient ones one on your side one on their side if they stack that could get out of hand uh, but imagine you could add power to iron man for instance if you can cheat him out with wave you get iron man out on turn four you pass on turn five it gives him five all of a sudden he's 10 power at his location plus whatever else you end up getting out there that could be a really good combo also just kind of naturally fits with she hulk because you're going to probably end up passing a turn at some point uh, and after you do that she's going to be discounted you can play her as well on top of whatever you play after that past turn uh, so a very cool way to give power and make use of unspent energy something that we don't really see in marvel snap except for i think sunspot and she hulk and infinite would be the three cards uh, it can be a very powerful effect as all three of those cards tend to be somewhere in the meta uh, so maybe it's better left untouched but i thought this was a cool addition for the give keyword so thank you very much number six possibilities the gronk <laughs> oh man i love this one it's so so good the Grinch, but Hulk mixed together. It's like he got the serum or something. This is actually from the Marvel Universe, by the way. I saw the cover and everything. I don't know the lore behind it, uh, but I think it's pretty funny that it's actually there. Anyways, the Gronk or Grunk, I don't know how it's pronounced, but four cost, one power. On reveal, steal a random enemy card's ability. Give it to the next no ability card you play. Now, I will say possibilities didn't have no ability in there, so I did manipulate the card slightly. I apologize, I don't do this often, very rarely, but I I, it, I think it just said the next card, and, and I thought that was a bit vague, because what if something had an on reveal, would the on reveal overwrite? Would it just overwrite the, the, the effect of that card, or would it have both? And how does that work if it's like Cosmo and and on reveal or you know like I, it just gets a bit sticky when there's a bunch of abilities i think if it overwrites that would make sense but it wasn't there so i went with no abilities why don't we give no abilities abilities by stealing them with the gronk and then he's given gifts out uh to his his buddies his angry green men like the hulk right i don't know i thought that was an interesting application and then i have it the versus versus rogue here because she's kind of similar stealing an ability she's also an almost close enough stat line three one um but she steals ongoing and the gronk could do that as well mind you stealing isn't just copying it's literally taking it from the opponent so they could have a really powerful effect and you steal it but i like the fact it's not just ongoing effect it could be an unreveal one that's already been used up but can be passed to your next card so that you could take advantage of that on reveal but that also makes it harder to target because what if your opponent has like a flooded board with a bunch of crap like like rocks and whatnot you don't want to steal the ability of a rock because it doesn't have an ability and then it's going to be a bit challenging to get uh, the Gronk to, to work efficiently, uh, but it could be game breaking, right? You could get some crazy abilities out of nowhere, um, and then you pass that onto your Wasp or Hulk or Misty Knight or anything like that. You could even stack it with Wong, get two abilities from two cards, and then give it to one card. I don't know how that would work either, but maybe that would be insane. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. But overall, the the lo the look, uh, the Christmas theme, uh, the everything you did. So thank you, possibility this was a great card for this challenge number five percival's jesus christ 
<laughs> oh my gosh, dude, this one was so funny. You crushed it. Oh my goodness. I don't even know power wise. I just saw this and laughed. And I was like, well, this guy's like, this guy make the video. My goodness, it's so good. And we are in the top five, by the way. Uh, so Jesus Christ is a fourth cost two power. On reveal, give all other cards plus two power. So he's very giving. He's giving the power to uh, his other, his friends and, and, and his enemies as well. He doesn't uh, distinguish between the two. But when this is destroyed, sad days, return to this location on turn six. He will rise again. Uh, uh, Percival didn't put this version of Jesus Christ, but I did it because it's from uh, Rick and Marty and it made me think of this card. And anyways, I wanted to put it there because it was funny. It could be like his resurrected version. Uh, but anyways, or wise or whatever you want to call it thematic abilities here are through the roof you crushed it it's too funny um and then ability also is is kind of legit like you could play this with deadpool so you start buffing deadpool with jesus christ because i imagine it would come out twice on turn six if you somehow get a magic turn you have a turn seven you play deadpool you destroy him a bunch of times he's getting the power from jesus christ like that could be pretty wild i also love that deadpool synergizes with jesus christ that's that's just too funny and then shang chi you could give power to your opponent's cards and then destroy them with shang chi or or venom your own cards to get a big buffs and then you actually get jesus christ destroyed so that you can play him or he returns on turn six uh, there obviously has to be a position open at that location still uh, but probably not too hard to do in destroy decks usually you're pretty open on your board anyways too funny too funny too good well played percival well played number four jt richardson's Emily Bright. Dude, this one is so good. I love the art. This stood out to me right away. I just I just knew I had to grab this one. But to top it all off, not just the art is fantastic. 10 out of 10 here. But the ability is really fascinating. So, a 4 cost, 3 power. Ongoing, give your opponent's cards in hand an optical illusion. It shows them the wrong stats, abilities, and variants until the end of the game. So it's not an illusion like you would think with Mysterio, for instance. Instead, in their hand, all their cards are not going to look like their cards. It's going to be random assortment. But when they play it and when it's revealed at the end of the game, it's the original cards that they brought to the table and what they drew. So I think this is really cool because it creates a little extra game. Do you remember where your cards are in your hand? You know, because they, they don't shuffle around. They're not going to get shuffled. They're still going to be there. So if I had like, uh, I don't know, like Iron Man, Onslaught, and Omega Red in my hand, those are my three cards. And then they get shuffled and then they have weird art. They look like Iron Fist, Agatha, and something else. And I'm like, what is going on with my hand? Well, all I have to do is remember that Iron Man was on the left, Onslaught was in the middle, and Omega Red was on the right. And then if I can play accordingly and remember that the power totals, do the math at the locations in my head, then I should be fine. Not to mention, it might even throw off the Emily Bright user because when they play them, they're going to have weird variants, weird uh, uh, cards that don't really make sense in decks. You're going to start thinking it's a bot or something. Why are they running that? But then it's going to reveal at the end. You're going to be like, oh, shoot. Yeah, that's because I played Emily Bright. I can't trust anything that my opponent plays. I have no information. That's kind of how it's balanced. If anything, I think she's a bit weaker for the player playing this card, but it's a really neat idea uh, to shuffle that around. And it's not too disruptive, really. It's like, I don't think this would tilt people too much. But if you looked away and you came back or you're not paying attention to the cards in your hand where they are, oh my gosh, you're going to have a hard time winning that game and getting through it. And then the math that you got to do at the end to make sure that you have won the locations, whoo, it's going to be a difficult one. Uh, but I thought this was a really creative idea fantastic art so thank you jt richardson number three eternity made by deluge yo this one is so cool and on the surface level i know what you're going to be thinking we'll get into it in a second but it is a six cost 20 power so your infinite stat line right ongoing before the end of the game give your opponent an extra turn whoa 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 an extra turn you're saying my opponent can take a turn seven or even a turn eight if magic is out there and, and i don't get to do that of course they're gonna win well wait 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 hold on because there's a few ways we can navigate around this for instance 
What if their locations are all filled because they committed hard and then they didn't have enough space for the extra turn? Because maybe I flooded with a bunch of stuff. Like I gave them goblins and rocks and crap. And now they can't actually deal with eternity efficiently. Or maybe they're just straight up not running Shang-Chi, which is probably the card you thought of when you saw this right away, right? So the, I think I think there's actually a lot of ways that this could work. And uh, I got some creator notes here from Deluge. Um, he was actually working with Average Bard Enjoyer, who is somebody I've showcased frequently on here, a great card designer. Uh, they were working together in the Barry vs. Discord. I absolutely love that. That is so cool. I love when, when you guys work together to create cards. It's awesome. Um, so he gave him a shout out and he said a few synergies here. So zero, you remove the ability of it. Easy. It's a turn 620 without the condition of infinite. Fantastic. Enchantress, you remove the ability from it. Maybe a little bit difficult because somehow you got to cheat this out and then you got to play Enchantress and get rid of it, whatever. But still, I see, I see the viability. And then Venom. Again, same thing. You got to cheat out an eternity and then you gobble it up. Its effect doesn't go off. Your opponent doesn't get an extra turn. Maybe you do that on turn six. You cheat out an eternity early. They snap because they're like sick, an extra turn. But then on turn six, you venom it and they don't get that turn six or turn seven rather. <laughs> Everybody's getting a turn six, but turn seven doesn't pop up. Uh, and then wave, he mentions wave. And then lockjaw as well. You can just get lockjaw out there. Now you're still going to have to get rid of that extra turn because that will be nasty. That is a huge downside like astronomical downside right uh but could still like there's so many ways to get rid of it and of course you're only running eternity in a deck that could work where you could get rid of that extra turn unless you're doing a snap draft like we do and chat would always pick this card but still i love this design man this was very 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 close to number one i was thinking of the other cards i was trying to not mention any that you suggested uh so professor x you lock down a lane and then you play attorney at a different lane just an idea of trying to limit the the spaces that your opponent has to play cards and get power uh, so that's the thought there viper try and viper over the eternity so that you get the extra turn and maybe you don't care about that lane <laughs> like you cheat out eternity you viper it over you get an extra turn, you play shang chi like that's your plan oh my gosh that'd be hilarious i would definitely try that and then sauron is a card that's going to be coming out this next month and it removes all the ongoing effects of cards in your deck so that could be an easy add-in in with your zero uh, abilities and then your venom or typhoid mary plays or whatever all those crazy gobble up the big things remove their abilities deck would be awesome dude what a great idea fantastic card number two nogolov's steel serpent holy i love this card now everybody knows i love move cards i love them but they're weak they need some help and this is it this is a great great helper for the move decks and guys a little bit of a timbit for like how to get featured on this um a lot of people are trying to make their card overly complicated i think snap thrives on simple design cards easy to understand it's right there not too wordy of text and i think nogolov nailed it here with the steel serpent when a card moves give it plus one power that's it when a card moves it gets plus one power simple unique creative love it right so he's a three cost two power so not a great stat line himself a bit awkward in the move decks because we have things like dr strange vulture we want to play those hulkbuster maybe if we're doing the multiple man so all of a sudden our threes are getting a little clogged up now that i'm looking at the suggested deck silver surfer could have actually worked in this as well but regardless let's just look at this deck as a whole it's kind of a move deck just basic move deck right i think steel serpent makes it so much better because the big heimdall on turn six moves everything they all get plus one power that means like your heimdall play is now like maybe a 16 power play or something like that if you get eight power moving eight cards wow so much vision bounces around maybe once maybe twice if you can cheat him out early because of locations or something elysium pops up and then you can vision move twice all of a sudden he's a five nine super valuable and you're bouncing him around to the location that you want captain marvel can fly to a location at seven power not just six maybe saves the day because of that plus one it'd be insane human torch doubles whenever he gets moved imagine he got plus one every time he doubled the the numbers would get astronomical be insane he's still countered hard by killmonger but still it'd be awesome and then multiple man is great when it has bonus power if you can keep moving it and the clappies carry the plus one power it'd be just nuts now this card doesn't move itself and it doesn't help cards move so that's where it's kind of balanced i think in this deck but i've always said that there should be another beneficiary from cards moving we have craven you know cards move to craven's location he gets plus two power so there is a goal to move cards to his location with steel serpent there is a goal to just move cards in general and i think that's awesome 
not just cards that get benefits themselves if they move, not cards that move other cards, just cards that benefit from movement occurring in your side of the board. I love it. I think this is a great card and kind of what move decks need. Does this put them on the map and make them viable? Probably not because they still have a lot of the similar problems, but it helps and it's fun and I love it. Number one, Panda's Goblin Queen. All right, guys, if you don't know Panda, Panda crushes it all the time. He even said in a post that it was his goal to give his absolute best in every custom card to try and meet these rankings. And bam, an absolute killer of a card here to start off the new year. Panda, you're doing well, my friend. Goblin Queen is a six cost, zero power. Ongoing has the combined power of all power given to your cards. So when you talk about a give challenge and you make something like this that really benefits from the keyword give, you're probably going to be in the top rankings. Very well done. He also has a little bit of a disclaimer. It is strictly to the cards that have give in their text. So a few cards. I have them on the right there. We got Nakia, Ironheart, Silver Surfer. I don't even know if there's any others at this moment in time. They have to directly give power. For instance, sure, it can double the power of the next card you play, but that's not really giving power a certain set amount of power right um it's just doubling so i feel like there's a very few amount of cards that would work in this but we can look at just these three cards and sum up their totals right so naka is going to be four okay goblin queen's now a six four ironheart's going to give six okay goblin queen's now a six ten and guess what those two cards are oh there's three drops let's say they're the only three drops that i'm playing in this game silver surfer comes out gives them plus six on turn five for instance well now goblin queen has now become a 6 16 that's pretty good value i think that's like where you want to strive with a six cost if it's only going to hit one lane and uh, meanwhile you've buffed everything else up on your other sides and all your cards are giving power so they're all accumulating power and that's probably going to be good enough to win another location also she has the ongoing tag maybe that synergizes somehow with like onslaught or something like that right it also can be countered by enchantress rogue or anything like that but you don't really want to cheat this out early you can but maybe it's a bit risky if you do it's kind of like null null has a similar effect right if all the power that's been destroyed is given to this card so it's almost like an ongoing give version of null and you know what i'm here for it. i think it's interesting these cards are very fascinating and fun to play with and give is just not a keyword in marvel snap but here we are making a bunch of custom cards with the keyword give and it's super interesting so Goblin Queen also put three variants here. Oh my gosh, they're so good. Look at these. This looks like straight out of the game. Like pixel variant, this like blurred 3D variant. I mean, that would look sick animated. Oh my gosh, that would look so good. The one in the middle, oh, just like epic with the green background. And then and then the base art just looks straight out of the game. Like these just look, look so legit. It's like I'm, I'm looking at reviewing a new card. Anyways, guys, that is gonna do it for this week's custom card review. Thank you so much for submitting all these cards. They are so much fun to go through. You guys have been crushing it. I apologize for the delay, but we're gonna get back on it every Sunday. So the start challenge starts tonight. Uh, so you can go ahead and make a card, put it in there in the weekly challenge channel, and I'll review them and I'll make the next video next Sunday. So until then, I'll catch you guys next time.